Welcome to Commissioner's Corner. I'm your host, Lois Leonard, and thanks for joining us. As pandemic restrictions are lifted, we are all excited and more than ready to get out of our homes and enjoy some freedom and explore new adventures. But one does not necessarily need to get on a plane and jet out of here. Perhaps looking in your own neighborhood for some activities is all you need. With us today is Commissioner of Parks and Recreation, Ryan Woods, here to update us on all the city has to offer and how his department keeps it available to us. Well, welcome Commissioner Woods. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Sure, sir. You have served in the Parks and Recreation Department since 2007. Can you speak to the challenges of this past year? What were some of the hardest parts of managing during the pandemic? The one good thing I can say that came out of this pandemic is people realized how important parks role is in everybody's lives. They're a place for outside for relaxation, respite, recreation, rejuvenation, all the R's uh, all together there. Um, but we had to make some um, changes throughout the year. So we had to make sure that our parks were safe. They remained welcoming. And that may mean we had to shut down playgrounds for a period of time. We couldn't have water drinking fountains on. Um, until we really knew the impact of the virus and how this was spread. So we really had to take those precautions. We had to spread people out on our golf courses, but our parks were as busy as ever. The walking loops were there. The parks were the one place where people could go outside, have that mental wellness that they needed to really get outside. And, and we saw the impact. Our trash barrels were fuller than ever, uh, but we stayed on top of it, made sure we had that safe and welcoming space for everybody throughout the pandemic. Well, I personally enjoyed those walks out in the parks myself, so thank you for that. Um, and now today, as we look forward to the reopening of businesses with no restrictions, I would imagine the amount of people coming into our cities will increase. So how will your team address the demands that will probably also increase? I think we've been on all year long. One thing with the Parks Department is we really didn't get to work from home. Most of our staff worked throughout the pandemic. Like I said, we just had some restrictions, but we're going to have to increase uh, the amount of times we're emptying trash barrels. We're going to have to stay on top of mowing the lawn. We have all of our athletic fields coming back. Last year, some baseball, softball, uh, football, whatever sport it was, uh, decided to take a year off. And they're all coming back this year, putting in proper precautions in place, of course, but really to stay on top of lining those baseball fields, making sure everything is safe for people to come into our parks, making sure it's a welcoming experience. So our hardworking staff is gonna stay on top of it to get to all 331 properties that we own throughout the city. Well, let's talk about all those opportunities and properties. There are over 2,300 acres of parkland alone in Boston, which includes 217 parks and playgrounds. So none of which are more famous, I would think, than the um, our Emerald Necklace. Our Emerald Necklace is, is our gem of our park system. Uh, it was created by Frederick Law Olmsted, who is celebrating his 200th birthday next year in 2022. And it was made as a link to connect the Boston Common and Public Garden with the gem of the Emerald Necklace, which is the 500 acres of Franklin Park. And over the past decade, we've had historic investments in our historic parks. And that is all new pathways throughout Franklin Park, doing $4.7 million of renovation at Jamaica Pond as you walk through. Olmstead Park just got a million dollar renovation. And from the sale of Winthrop Square downtown, uh, $28 million was allocated to do a action plan in Franklin Park, where we actually have some money to put behind improvements for the first time in decades into Franklin Park. Um, and then we're gonna move through with the muddy river that we're working with the Army Corps of Engineer. We daylit the river. We're now doing all this dredging to take on more storm water to get rid of um, soils uh, in certain areas to mow down the Phragmites and then do some more pathway improvements. So it's a really exciting time in the Emerald Necklace with all the improvements, but they are the gem of our system. Well, um, in addition to the Emerald um, Necklace, uh, your, your department has also worked on adding some inclusion parks to, the, um, to our city. It's really important. All, we're very excited that all Boston residents are within a 10 minute walk from their front door to the nearest park, but the quality of that park that 
is always differing from your front door. So one thing we're making an effort is really making our playgrounds more universally accessible. So kids of all abilities, people of all ages, whether it's the caretaker that's taking the child to the park or that child with disability, that they all have opportunities in every single playground. So we just did a recent renovation in Roxbury on an interval street for children's playground that is a fully universal playground. And of course, everyone knows about the newest addition of Martin's Park, named after Martin Richard, the youngest victim of the Boston Marathon bombing, right behind the Children's Museum that has a ginormous pirate ship that has all this kind of dramatic play, swings, slides, and it's made sure that every feature can be used to people of all abilities. So it's, it's our new way of doing business. We're very excited about it. And it really brings us equity lens and inclusion lens all together. The parks sound like they'd be fun for adults too, <laughs> not just the children. So that's wonderful. Um, well, one of the uh, most favorite summer activities is to ride the swan boats. And of course, last year in the public garden, they were closed. But let's listen to the mayor because she announced the reopening. It is a pleasure to be here uh, to open up uh, the first swan boat ride of the season. This is an amazing day in the city of Boston. We've had such a difficult uh, last 14, 15 months all across our country, all across our world with a global pandemic. Uh, but this right here is a sign of hope, of renewal, uh, and I'm just so excited. I'm grateful to everyone uh, who has made this happen. I certainly want to shout out our, our amazing Parks Commissioner Ryan Woods for his leadership in the city. Please uh, give it up for him and his entire team. Uh, certainly to uh, Ryan and Phil, um, I mean, uh, Lynn and Phil, I really appreciate your leadership. And to all of the families here, uh, this is just so incredible uh, in terms of making sure that we have good open space. This is one of my favorite places in the city of Boston. Um, this too symbolizes the need for joy in our city. We are launching a joy agenda in Boston. We understand that for too long this past year, we have been in isolation uh, and devastation. And so we need to be intentional about creating opportunities and creating space for joy, for residents to come together uh, to celebrate uh, what is wonderful about our city and certainly our open space and our parks are amazing in the city of Boston. So Commissioner, our athletic fields are now wide open for business as well, including allowing spectators now, but uh, one still needs to access a permit for organized games and events. That's correct, Lois. Um, our, our permits are free in the city of Boston. So as once somebody goes on to our website, boston.gov backslash back parks, excuse me, they're able to go on and uh, create a uh, permit application and submit it, have their own account. So it's easy to go back and make changes as needed. But uh, all permits are free, but we do encourage all permits for organized activity, whether it be sports or large birthday parties, gatherings, special events, and they're all free of charge and accessible on our website. Free. That's great. That's a that's a wonderful thing that we have to offer. And also the parks are offering a summer fitness program. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, we're grateful again that uh, our friends at Blue Cross Blue Shield came on to help sponsor our fitness program. We're offering over 25 free classes every single week in 16 neighborhoods throughout the city. So whether you're that guru that can do the boot camp or high intensity fitness, uh, unlike myself, or if you'd more prefer, uh, prefer to have Zumba classes, Tai Chi classes, or yoga classes in the park, they're free of charge. 25 classes every single week, starting now all the way through the beginning of October. And anything else that we've missed that perhaps might interest young people to keep them occupied throughout the summer? Sure, we've, um, we've, we're bringing back our artist in residence program where we will be in two different parks every single day, but we will get through every single neighborhood with doing arts and craft activities. As long as you show up to the playground, we will have all the supplies. Um, you know, it might be making GIMP one day, it might be making, you know, masks out of paper plates and popsicle sticks, but activities for kids, as well as on the weekends doing our, um, our painting workshops, watercolor painting. So we'll have locations such as Scarborough Pond or Millennium Parks and picturesque parks where we provide all the paints, all the canvas, all you do is have to show up all free of charge. Uh, we just ask you to come out and enjoy your local park. And speaking of ponds, I believe the Frog Pond Spray Pool might be one of the favorites. Uh, will the fountains be open again this summer? They will. We're excited to have the Frog Pond officially open the last week of June this year. 
It's a great place in this historic park to come down and cool down for the summer. We'll have some sort of large celebration uh, as we open at the end of June with ice creams and face painting and activities for kids. It also has the carousel right there near uh, the frog pond. So we encourage people to come down, make a day of it and uh, enjoy uh, splashing around in Boston's first, in America's first park. That's wonderful. And um, we're gonna keep moving on because there is so much to offer. We also have two public golf courses here. We do, we have the um, George Wright Golf Course in High Park and the William Devine in Franklin Park. Uh, William Devine is the second golf course in the nation, uh, founded in 1896. Really interesting history where George Wright, who was uh, a player, uh, a baseball player at the time, started playing golf uh, roguely uh, in the late 1890s and um, was told to stop by the Boston police that he needed permission from the Boston Parks Department. <laughs> so he went before the parks commissioners and they gave him a pilot permit to try to see how it worked out. And that started out with burying some tomato cans in the grass to create their own holes. And from that, we have grown to have this unbelievable golf course that's open to the public. And I will say a George Wright golf course that is named after, obviously, the person who started playing at Franklin Park, um, started in 1938. And this year, we are proud that it was just listed as number 59 of 100 courses, public courses, uh, one of the best. So one of the best public courses in the whole country uh, at number 59. And it's something we're thrilled about. We have never been that high up. So it just shows the hard work that has been put in by the Boston Parks and Recreation employees that manage those courses. Well, congratulations to you. That's Thanks. wonderful. And um, for our history buffs, I think there's something out there for them too, because the city has quite a few historic cemetery sites and burying grounds that can would be a, a wonderful idea for a walk in the summer. We do. We have 19 cemeteries. Three of them are active burial grounds, 16 historic burial grounds. So those 16 historic burial grounds, many of them are along the Freedom Trail, are open daily for people to walk through. There's also nightly tours with the uh, gravestone tours that are done by the trolley tour companies to explore those gravestones at night. Um, they're a great place um, to go through, find history. There's all sort of historic markers as you walk through, um, but it's a great activity to spend the afternoon during the summer. And, you know, Commissioner, I, I'm always surprised and thankful that the, for the amount of trees that we have in our city, it's pretty amazing, I think. And how extensive a job, though, is it to take care of those trees? So we have a lot of emphasis right now going on sustainability and our tree canopy. Um, we estimate we have about 125,000 trees throughout the city of Boston. And we're in the middle of an urban forestry plan. We're doing, the fir for the first time ever, a full assessment to learn how many trees we have, what kind of trees they are, what condition, you know, are they good, fair, dead, dying, or diseased? So we really can make a plan on how we replace these trees and really, um, you know, how we move forward with our, our tree canopy coverage. So it's exciting to have this for the first time. We'll know where those empty tree pits are, where we can plant new trees throughout the city. Uh, and we just uh, moved from planting a thousand street trees a year to 2000 street trees a year. So we are working throughout the spring and the fall, uh, rigorously planting and available and open tree pits. And we encourage neighbors to engage with us and let us know, do you want a tree in front of your home? You know, we'd love to add more trees. So if you're, um, your tree, your street is barren and could use a, a street tree there. We'd love to put it in and we'll just make sure there's still enough ADA accessibility. It's within 10, you know, further than 10 feet from the nearest utility so it can fit. But if you check all those boxes, we're more than happy to uh, place a tree in front of your home. Well, that's wonderful. Great news. Um, I didn't know about that. So that's a good thing to share. Um, I have to say that one of the, the best places that I personally find to enjoy our trees is walking through Millennium Park in West Roxbury. Um, I love that park. I really do. I mean, that park has an interesting history. It started as the Gardner Street landfill and yeah. we were able to use a lot of the soil from the big dig in order to create this park in this park that's filled with playgrounds, walking loops, softball fields, now has a track and football field as well as a baseball field. And then it has a canoe launch. So it's mm -hmm. one of our only canoe launches that you can go out there and get right to the Boston Harbor. Um, so it really is something for everybody. It's a place where you always see people walk their dogs. 
and yeah. we're doing some improvements right now. We're in the community process to uh, update and renovate the playground at the top and do a bathroom study. That is something we hear over and over. There's not a lot of public restrooms, uh, especially in that area of uh, West Roxbury. So when people are out there, whether it's for the soccer game or we're doing the walking loops to have some sort of public facility that people are able to use. So we're looking into the feasibility of that as, as we are renovating uh, the children's playground. And of course, with all the trees that surround that park, um, I enjoy the birds. There's a lot of bird watchers that I've noticed in the area as well. And I think that's pretty remarkable for a city like Boston or any city in the country that can have that kind of open space. So it's just lovely. Um, so what comes next for Parks and Recreation? I think we spoke about some of the improvements you're making to Franklin Park. Um, I think you mentioned Mobley Park. Are there, is there anything else, um, any other initiatives for the near future? Sure, we have a lot of planning studies underway. We're in the midst of the Boston Common Master Plan, that Franklin Park Action Plan. We're re-envisioning Moakley to help it um, Boston to, you know, so Boston homes aren't inundated with water. Moakley Park will be able to uh, take on stormwater flow, will take on the rising sea level, um, and be able to have areas that are floodable certain times of the year but other times are passive park space. So instead of building a 16 foot cement wall to stop the storm water or uh, stop the sea level rise rather from coming into the park, we're really creating passive parks on the edge that can take on the inundation of water. But then the other seven, eight months of the year, um, they are full usable park, open passive spaces. So we're excited about that. We're also working on that urban forestry plan, as I mentioned, and a parcel priority plan where we ask neighbors, let us know about vacant parcels that are near your homes that you know maybe could be future in the future acquired to be public open space so that might be an open field that's at the end of your street and whether it's publicly owned privately owned we want to know about it so when we're able to acquire more land in our densely you know populated city we want to make as many parks as we can so know those opportunities are out there so we've been asking community members to help us and let us know about those available spaces throughout their communities well Thank you so much. I have to say the, the, the amount of work um, that brings such enjoyment and, you know, most of us don't certainly don't realize when we walk into a park and take advantage of these um, services, we don't know the behind the scenes, the amount of work that goes in to maintaining and also the, the future creative plans that you have in mind, especially keeping in mind green and sustainable and just moving our city forward in a, in a wonderful way. So thanks so much, Commissioner Ryan Woods for joining us. And I hope you and your team have a wonderful summer. Thanks, Lois. Yes, I must credit the hardworking men and women of the Boston Parks Department, whether it's the park rangers or animal control, our horticulture division, our maintenance division, our landscape architects. We really are a team and really trying to create those fun spaces that people feel safe and welcomed in. So we're going to continue to do that. And we hope somebody, everyone visits one of our local branches this summer to throw the pun in there uh, to visit one of your local parks. So we hope to see you in the park this summer. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again soon. And thank you, our viewers, for watching. Many of us are grateful for having had such accessible and wonderful outdoor spaces to enjoy during the pandemic. A simple walk outside during this challenging time was sometimes the one thing that kept many of us sane. So let's not take these resources for granted. Enjoy them. And for all the information you need, please go to their website at boston.gov parks. And we'll see you next time on Commissioner's Corner.